So are we doing a, a new blog today or an old blog or a new blog of old blog? So you're stuff? saying you want to do a new blog or an old blog or an old blog of new blogs or a new blog of old blogs? Yeah, we're kind of catching up. We still have catch up to do on yeah. the old blogs. I like catch up too. Uh, but I think I think we've given them an old blog this week. I think next I think I think this week, the second one for this week should be a new blog. Okay. Something uncharted territory. We can talk about anything. It's a it's a green field opportunity, is what the the venture capital people say. Well, isn't it a blue ocean? Blue sky, green field, blue ocean. Blue ocean, blue ocean. I they think. tell you it's a red field, and they they're going to try to send you to Mars. That's the thing to remember. No, I think when you make a competitive multiplayer game, they say that it's a red ocean. Really? Because the seas are bathed with blood of your competitors. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah. Okay. So what are we doing today, Chad? What's the plan? Uh, you know what we have, you know, what we're doing why we kind of have to rush this a little bit. Yeah. We have a play test today. We do with external people from the discord, which they I can say, join. Where we grab those people from random people from the discord. Random got a little from message discord. from Will that yep. said, Hey, looking for play testers. So seriously, if you want to play test our game, uh, stop by discord.gg slash Drayvon Bay. I'll tell you what to do, do those things. And then uh, you too will get asked yeah. randomly one day. We're not doing this as some big open beta kind of thing or some other more organized thing. Um, so often, often like I think there's a way to think about play tests that the level we're doing. There's like big open betas or big open alphas where you're like, hey, does our back end work? Our server is going to work. Um, hey, <laughs> which, we're doing this for we're doing it for promotion. Which of the which of the 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 fifty sequential links in the chain from when a player logs into the game and tries to start a game is going to fail when fifty thousand exactly. people hit it at the same time. Yeah, it's always nice to exactly. find that or, in advance. Or you find out that you um, brick some video cards. Yeah, it happens. Whoops. Yes, but those are a different kind of play tests. Those you're not really looking for feedback. You're looking just for statistical numbers at like what happens here is this is this good for us? Maybe fine tune your minimum requirements, stuff like that. Where what we like to do is we like to do um, observe play tests. So we're actually watching people. So we bring in four people. Um, it's not in person anymore, which so kind of is helpful that we can do people from anywhere, but it also kind of hurts that we can't sit there and watch them and understand how they behave. Um, but so with this, um, we we watch. Uh, how they play, they talk while they're playing, and we're not looking for bugs. We kind of don't care about bugs. And I often tell them in the beginning, don't report bugs. We don't care about bugs. We know those bugs. What we care about is design. It's your playing is going to teach us the things that we're missing in the game. We've made assumptions. We've had hundreds, thousands of people, maybe at this point, play the game. But we're going to have millions play the game. And so these are always going to be a subset sample. So we just want to learn more about our game from you by you playing it and giving us feedback. And the thing is, you don't actually need to give us feedback. You just need to play the game with your friends or with these complete strangers and talk about it. And that's the feedback we're going to get. We're going to understand from there. Like, I think some people have this feeling of like, I've got to tell them I don't like the color blue. Like, no, <laughs> you don't. Just just never pick up the blue weapon. Wait, we'll be like, oh. you don't like no, this is awkward now. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, I it's, it's interesting because like your your tendency when you sit down and you're playing an unreleased game is to be like, oh, wow, this gun looks cool. Oh, it shoots. Oh, the thing is green. I like I like the green ball that fight comes out. This is really exciting and fun. But but really, realistically, we just want somebody to fire up the game on Twitch and just play the game and kind of talk quietly to themselves about what how, how they, whether they're having fun or not. Like the things, yes. you know. Um, yes. It's, 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 um, it's funny because like some of my one of my favorite playtest experiences ever was some friends asked me to come in and play their game. I went into the like the little room on the couch. They didn't mention that the entire studio was going to be sitting outside the moment I sat down, huddled around the TV, watching the mirror image of me play. And then when they came out, they were just like, "You did some weird stuff, man. You, I've never <laughs> seen anybody go do that thing before. Like, why did you? What were you thinking when you did this? And and but it's it's so so we do that. We bring people in. We ask them not to play the game in advance. They run through the first uh, first episode, which is usually like anywhere from sixty minutes to three hours, depending on the group and how how Amy has the difficulty tuned at a at a given moment. And then we ask them a couple questions, kind of about their experience, things that they like, things that they don't like, stuff like that. So yeah, if you if you're interested, definitely go to the Discord. Sign up with the Discord. It's discordgg Bombay. Uh, there's instructions that tell you what to do. You follow them and and. Uh, one day I'll post a message that says, hey, we're looking for playtesters in 90 minutes. Does anybody want to play? And you can press say yes and come play. You know, and 
Yeah, I would say, and with that, you know, um, when we're talking, it doesn't really always take an hour. Sometimes it's actually, like when we play, it doesn't take an hour. No. So that's one of the interesting things for us now as we're testing this and why we need to kind of have these observed play tests is we know the guns, what we're going to ship with. I think, well, there's some tuning there. There's some tuning around a bunch of little things. But the big thing is the driver and how much the driver controls the experience. And we will have really intense. We had yesterday insane, crazy, just pulled it out with the edge of our teeth kind of thing. And we're like, but the cool thing is, as hard as that was for us, and even though we've been playing, the driver now adapts to players' skill level and it will deliver something different to new players. And now we have to be like, is that still working right? Does that still feel good? Is that still challenging, fun, can still be social, have the ups and downs, pacing different, and all of those things, but yet be um, working for you? Well, there's a whole spectrum, right? From the person who's never touched the game before, doesn't know how the guns work, doesn't know what the enemies do, doesn't know what the specials do, doesn't know what the, how the grenades work. It doesn't have like the combat sandbox in their head yet. And then once you once you understand what's available to you as tools and what the enemies are going to use as tools, what the driver's going to throw at you, you kind of ascend to phase two. And then there's a really nice, gentle like learning curve as you progress until you get to a point where like the game is throwing three brutes at you at a time and there's multiple things trying to grab you and you're getting gooped and it's it's just it's just it's 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 shocking that it's the same difficulty level for us when we play and for people who've never picked up the game before and we have such wildly divergent experiences well i think i don't know if you've noticed is the other thing that i've been noticing is all of a sudden now where these things happen become very important and locations of like, you're like, hey, we're going through crew quarters and we're just in one of the hallways. You throw whatever you want at me. I got it. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> it's a murder yeah. shoot for the aliens. They just keep running yes. towards you and they just fall left and right. It's no problem. We're in the park cutting through and you start throwing some things at me. I'm going to be really freaking out. I may just run for it and leave people behind and decide I'm going to be okay and I will be why we continue on. How did that work out for you when you did the, when you tried to, because Nick tried that this morning for us and it did not go well for him. As soon as he got separated from the pack, the driver's like, oh, weakness. Yoink. And grabbed <laughs> yeah. him and he was knocked yeah. almost immediately. That, that, um, we, we, we played another campaign this morning that we're not talking okay. about yet. Okay. Um, Very good. It, um, I got rocked pretty hard. I, I, would, I was not running ahead. It just, uh, we were, there's some, there's some hard choke points in that campaign well and so the and other thing is, the price i was gonna say the other thing that's interesting is that those points one of the other things we do during playtesting is identify the points where when something interesting happens is good so we can kind of you know we don't tell the driver what to do we kind of nudge it into hey this is a fun place to fight maybe you know maybe fight here more um because you know for a while there was there were a couple of doors in in the first level of episode one that just you you knew you were going to come up to and there was going to be a grabber on the other side and you're going to get a choke point and that's yeah. that's like like if that happens once every ten games or twice every ten games that's a that's a big success for us but if it happens every game then it's something that's too predictable and isn't and becomes less fun each time you see it I think yeah you know it's one of the things of when we start working for that going down that path of like um we start working with new like level designers for instance they'll be like oh hey in our game. We make it where a third of the time when you walk into the room, something may be like going up that vent and you might just catch the tail end of it. It's like, we don't do that. But they're like, but no, no, because it, it will naturally happen sometimes, but it will happen in such a different kind of variety in different ways. And when it does go up the vent, it's going to be like, oh, wait, there was something above it and it had to drop down. And now all of a sudden you're fighting two of that. Like it just is so much more variety when you just have that open that way and kind of have those things happening well and and like coming from left for dead like there's there's an assumption with games that people are going to play at once like a narrative single player narrative driven game somebody's going to play it once maybe twice if there's like a new game plus mode they can come back and do it again with a game like left for dead or the anacrusis our expectation is you're going to play it at least a handful of times and if somebody gets really into the game they could be playing it for years and years and years so we want it to be different every time Yes, which makes testing it a pain in the butt <laughs> and makes play testing though fun. But, you know, it isn't like, let's say Half-Life 2, where you can go play that and know exactly the path. I know um, where every line spawns, Chad. Which, if you want to talk about horrible play testing experience, um, when I um, got interviewed at Valve, didn't really get interviewed, I just kind of hung out with Gabe for, me and Eric hung out with Gabe for three days. At the end of it, Eric left early and I um, sat down in front of a monitor that was making me sick because it was a very big Apple monitor. 
um, this is remember 2004, uh, oh, wow. and Gabe sat behind me and watched me play Half-Life 2 for three hours. And at one point, I got stuck. <laughs> you want to know how bad of a sinking feeling in your stomach? You're like, and now this is where we get unhired because I'm an idiot who can't play this game. This is I have to go back to Cleveland if I don't if I don't figure out. That's yes. some real high video game stress there. <sighs> that was bad. That was bad. And then he just let me kind of just flounder a little bit and be like, a lot of people get stuck here. You got to go through that. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, so that's a good, but that's a good point. Like, th there was a place on one of our maps in episode one where testers have been consistently been stalling out for like a month. Like they'd get to it. They'd progress really well through the first couple of levels. They'd reach this point and then just kind of like not know what to do until eventually they wiped or somebody, somebody got knocked out and then the whole thing would fall apart and they'd have to do it over again. And when that happened, it's not, it's not because the players have made a mistake, right? It's because yeah. we've messed something up somewhere in the process where we're not signaling well enough to them what they should be, where, where they should go next, what they should be doing next so that they can progress. You know, it's, it's not, if you're a tester, you're helping us find the places that we've made mistakes. Not we're not looking for your mistakes. Is is the yes. thing to remember? And Gabe's yeah, and, and then that. and then when we're when we're doing this, we often have like there's like a list of like they should know this by the end of map one. They should know this by the end of the game. And like navigation is one of those things. They just shouldn't feel lost, but often they won't actually know where they're going. But they do know where they're going because they can understand and pick up the the clues and kind of the cues inside of the map. And then sometimes it falls apart a little bit and you could tell that difference of like, oh, I actually don't know what's ahead of me, but I kind of know where I'm going versus I'm turned around. I don't know where to go. I'm going to stop here for a little bit and figure it out. Oh, and now I'm going to get uh, my head eaten off. So, <laughs> right. Now, we both know the place that happens out on that map in the mall. So. Yeah. It, se it seems we, we've, we've moved it out. We, yeah. We've made some changes. It seems to be a little bit better now, but um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a fascinating process to watch and it's it's really fun and i mean it ties into how we're approaching launch too right like our our you know we're 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 working toward a release this fall things are going i think you know as well as they ever do in games from my experience games released during a pandemic yeah 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 things seem like like we we're able to get people to come in and play people are playing people are having fun like we have yet to have a play test that ends with somebody being wow i'm glad to be done with this thing people are always like can we can we can we try more i'd like to keep keep hammering at yeah. this a little bit even when they get their butts kicked so um but i mean that is the way we think about launch right is we wish we could just launch the game now we wish we could have launched the game probably in last january like what's the littlest we can give you so that we can start getting feedback because we don't want to do lip service to the idea of listening to the community we actually want to build this with the community and so with that we want to give them something to play and in this case we want to give them enough of a statement of like this is what we're trying to do so here you have the the last blog we did was about the pillars these are the pillars of how we think about this and now here's the expression of that how have we done there what feedback do you have to give us to make this improve it and so then every episode that we come out after that every weapon we add every creature we add everything we do is based off of not just us as designers going hey let's play test this but us going hey this is the feedback we're getting from the community and so, you know, um, I was talking to Amy Hem Hemming, excuse me, Amy Henning, Hemming. Oh my gosh, Amy, sorry. Uh, at Dice the one year and I was telling her like, oh, you know, we were doing this thing episodic in a different way that I really wanted to be this living, breathing story. And she dared me to release one episode at a time. She's like, just launch with one episode. She's like, what does HBO do? It's one episode, just do one episode. And it's so tempting, but I don't think that's enough. I think I, we need to do a little more. I mean, I, I love... I love the idea of having like three weeks and doing week one, episode one, week two, episode two, week three, episode three. The problem is then we won't have week episode four on week four, probably. And realistically, like I would love to be able to adjust the episodes, the the future episodes based on what we learn. Because like, like this is it's it's, you know, the the old aphorism about the battle plan lasting until the moment you, re, you, you make contact with the enemy is is kind of true here, except we're not talking about the enemy. We're talking about people who, who bought the game. My assumption is that our perception of how this game plays and how this works for the audience is going to change dramatically once we can load up Twitch and watch people playing the game and see how normal people yes. are playing in an unobserved kind of situation. Yeah, and then at some point we'll, we'll release a roadmap before launch, but I want to have the roadmap not be, and then we're going to do this exact thing. It's more, 
then we're going to focus on this part because you're going to give us a bunch of feedback and we want to be able to then spend time of like, we have some ideas for the next set of weapons that are going to come. I think we'll probably be releasing those, but like how they get released and how the community gets them. Because, um, you know, it's not like we're just making this game for ourselves to play. Um, we want to, we want to play this, you know, alongside of our regular co-op sessions that we play in uh, the discord. I, um, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Like the, the things that are in different, we're, one of the things that's happening this week is we're pulling out a lot of the things that are in different levels of readiness for launch. Um, and, and I think probably without exception, all of that stuff is going to end up, you know, later in the, later in the roadmap. Um, but, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely interesting watching the game change as those tools that we've been kind of been accustomed to get, get pulled out. Yes. And I can't wait to see what people do when we add them back in. Cause some of them are ridiculous and, and really, really good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and that is that interesting thing of like, now we're getting down and we're really just kind of polishing that. Like, this is what's launch is going to look like. And it's going to have these things. Oh, I missed this weapon. I know. It's coming. It's coming. The rockets that shoots rockets is coming. Look, the rocket that shoots rockets, it's a real good, it's a really, really good rocket launcher. My favorite game is to see how many rockets I can get it to shoot because it's all tied to the number of bad guys it flies over. But um, anyway. Does uh, it set things on fire? No. So is yeah, it the it greatest weapon ever in the game? No, it absolutely not, sets things on fire. Not in the way the laser rifle does. Well, yeah, but it sets, if you, look, I tried to save my teammate the other day and I shot some rockets over him just to clear out the, the enemies of the horde a little bit. And it set a couple of the horde on fire, which set the goo on fire. And then bad things happened to the people that were in the goo. You tried. You know, you sometimes tried. the cleansing power of flame is not what you, what's cracked up to be. It's your intent. You meant good. I, I don't know about that. Um, I think that's as good a place as I need to wrap it up, huh? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's... So, I mean, really, um, go to the Discord, sign up to be a playtester. We what, grab people in. What was that Discord again? Is it uh, Discord.gg? Discord. Slash straight slash, Bombay. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you say things three times, people remember them better is my understanding. Do you have to, how close do you have to say them? Together? I think you have to do it pretty, like you have to say like discord.gg slash straight Bombay and then do discord.gg. Discord.gg slash stray Bombay. You mean discord.gg slash stray Bombay. You can sign up there right now and it's free. You can just come yeah. in and hang out with everybody. We play co-op games on uh, Wednesday night and mods on Thursday night, usually. Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, now. It's Tuesday. We're playing day of feet tonight. Day of Defeat. Well, you won't see this. This will be after we play Day of Yeah, Defeat. yeah. We played Day of Defeat. It's a modded days Day of ago. Defeats. But, um, okay. Yeah. That is literally it. Um, so enjoy this. Let us know also and go to the Discord and let us know what you would care to hear, hear about. Um, one of the things we wanted to cover was playtesting because for us, it really is important of how we think about interacting with the community, delivering the content to them, and having you interact with us and give us feedback. And I'd much rather have you give us feedback after you've touched and played the game than just looking at a picture on the screen.